The revolution in electronic technology has given musicians and composers a great range of new techniques, voices and sounds. This is one of the studios at the Radiophonic Workshop, where we make electronic music for radio and television programs. In our day-to-day -day work here, we're not necessarily always pushing back the frontiers of experimental music, but nevertheless, this is a place where we can explore many exciting new sounds. This is one of our main pieces of equipment, a synthesizer, an electronic device which can be used as a musical instrument. First of all, let me show you five basic stages in using the synthesizer. Behind here are 12 tone generators, or if you prefer, oscillators. Let's set one of them to work. Behind this panel, an electric circuit is sending out a signal which is being fed through to the loudspeaker. This knob is simply the volume control. Up or down. Loud soft. Now you probably know that all sounds have a waveform which can be seen on an oscilloscope. From left to right it shows pitch, vertically it shows volume. Or you can operate them both at the same time. This is a frequency counter. If I set this tone to 440 cycles per second, I know that I'll have middle A on the piano. And if I want to go an octave higher, I look for 880 cycles. Adjustment is quite critical at these fairly high frequencies. There it is, 880 cycles. So far, we've only been using one oscillator. But in fact, all 12 of these oscillators can be controlled either by hand or by one of the other oscillators. Let me show you what I mean. This oscillator is set at five cycles per second. I've turned it up but you can't hear anything because five cycles per second is too low for the human ear. But if we take the five waves per second coming from that oscillator and use it to control one of the other oscillators, say this one, then we can impose on it a five cycles per second vibrato effect, which can be increased or decreased, speeded up or slowed down. What I've just set up, one oscillator controlling another, is an example of voltage control, which is central to the operation of all synthesizers. And it can turn a rather dull whine into an interesting and useful musical voice. Which brings me to the patch board. Now then. There's the basic tone. Each time I'm adding one of these pins into the patch board, I'm adding an extra oscillator into the circuit. Each oscillator represents a different harmonic. So in this way, I'm able to build up the reedy sound. So we've got the basic tone and one, two, three, four, five harmonics. I'll take away the harmonics now so you can hear the contribution they make to the whole sound. So now all you're hearing is the basic tone. I'll put the harmonics back in again. So far, we've just been listening to continuous notes. Now let's consider individual notes, which we can build up into a melody later. Every note on any instrument has a definite shape, which we call the envelope. And to make this shape on the synthesizer, we feed the note through an envelope shaper. Let's take this signal that we were using a moment ago and put it into this envelope shaper, controlled by this row of knobs. Basically, it's an on-off switch. Or you can use the same button to trigger a longer note.
Now, compare that with this. I've given it a gradual beginning by extending what we call the attack. The end of the note is still abrupt, so to lengthen it, I add what's called decay with this knob. Notice the difference? A gradual beginning and now a gradual ending as well. So, we've talked about basic tone, pitch, volume, vibrato, tone colour and envelope shape, all created by this one piece of electronic technology. At this point, you might well ask, why do we go to all this trouble simply to imitate the sound of a conventional musical instrument? Well, the answer is that we very rarely try to copy conventional sounds. We're far more interested in exploring abstract sounds to create certain moods and effects. For instance, when I was asked to provide music for a BBC film about the abandoned airfields of East Anglia, I felt that there was scope in these pictures to get away from some of the constrictions of conventional music. For example, here's a widely spaced chord which I'm generating from six oscillators. One, two, three, four, five, six. To realize one of my ideas, I fed that chord through two of these eight filters. By using a high pass filter, I can cut off the chord note by note from the bottom until just the highest note remains. Just listen. There it is, just the highest note. Similarly, by feeding the chord through a low pass filter, I can cut the chord off note by note from the top this time until just the lowest note remains. Just listen. Just the lowest note. There it is. Eventually, I combined the output of both filters and fed the output through an envelope shaper, which meant that once more, the operation is controlled by this one button. To me, this is extremely evocative of the feeling of flying, and in the film I used a series of these arpeggios to accompany a simple soaring melody. To end with, let me tell you about one more device on the synthesizer, but bear in mind that we've only seen a fraction of the resources available, and we've only been in one of the five studios here at the Radiophonic Workshop. In another part of the same film, there were shots of piston-engined aircraft, which have a highly individual engine sound that can be musically stylized to good effect. Now here's another situation where you can use your imagination. Let's go back to our oscillators. Here's my first oscillator, and this time I can control the pitch with this joystick. Now then, fade two oscillators up together and they'll sound just like a pair. Here they are. Once again using the joystick to control them. Now, feed those two oscillators into a device known as a ring modulator, and they'll react against each other like this. Once again, the joystick is of great help. What I'm looking for now is more something more like an engine sound. And I know that if I feed in low frequencies, I'll get some of the throb and rumble of those aircrafts all those years ago.